What's happening buddy? This is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. In this video, I want to show you how you can build a contact form and put icons into each one of your input fields along with the comments. And the best part is when you type your name in, so I say John Smith, the word name moves up along with the email, the phone, and the comments. And we're starting right now. All right, so I'm using the Bootstrap template that you can find at getbootstrap.com. Head to the docs and the introduction, and halfway down the page, you'll find include Bootstrap CSS and JS right here by copying into the clipboard, and what you get as a result is hello world. So to get started, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build the form first, and then I'm gonna come over and grab some icons from Font Awesome. So I'm gonna start by just adding a form down below. So after hello world, I'm gonna add a container. So I'll say div, not dev, dev class container. And inside the container, what I'm gonna do is I'll just add the word form. And I would add components if I was gonna make this a workable form, but for this example, we're just doing it for a design standpoint. So after the form, I'm gonna say div, class and I'm gonna add a new class called form floating and add a margin bottom of three for the spacing. And I said floating, let's try floating, that's an idea. So inside the form floating, I'm gonna add an input type, input type, and in there I'm gonna say it's gonna be text and the class I'm gonna use for this is gonna be form control. Now for this example, we have to also use is both an ID and a placeholder. The ID is gonna connect to the label below. So I'm gonna call this one floating name. I'll use the capital N for camel case. And the placeholder, I'm just gonna write the word John. Again, you're not gonna see the words. You can put whatever placeholder you want. You can simply just say the word name. That's totally fine. After this, we're gonna add a label. So we'll say label. Four, and we're gonna connect the ID to the label. So the floating name, we'll also go to floating name, and we'll close the label, and we're gonna write the word name. What we should see on the screen is the word name right here in this long form box, because that's the, where the container is. And if I click inside the name, it automatically moves up and down by default. Pretty cool, thanks Bootstrap. And if I also wanna move the H1 while we're at it, let's just drop the H1 into the container. And let's add a class, we'll say MY5 to get some space. Hello world, we'll just call this one now, contact us. There we go. So after the name, I wanna add an email. So right here, I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some extra spacing. You can see where things are a little bit easier. And I'll move this one up. And we're gonna repeat the process again. Let me make sure I get the right indentation. There we go, right there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say div class, and again, I'm gonna add a form floating, not floatin, and we'll give a margin bottom of three to this. And inside of here, I'm gonna say input, and in here, the type is going to be an email for our email address. The class is going to be form control, the ID, we're gonna get something brand new, so we'll say floating email, and the placeholder for this one as well will just be email. After that, we're gonna add a label, so we'll say label for, and this one again repeats the ID above, so I'll say form, and then floating email, and in here, we're gonna say email. And just like that, the email pops up. We'll do one for the phone and one with a message down below. So if we come down here, one more space, and just give it some extra space again so you can see the difference of the div tags easily on the screen. And from here, what I'll do is say div class, you got it, form floating MB3 for margin bottom three. And then we're gonna add the input Type is gonna be text, even though it's a number, it's still characters. So the type we'll say is text in here. And after that, we'll say class form control. And the ID is brand new again, so I'll say floating phone. 
And the placeholder we're gonna add is a phone. After that, we're gonna add a label. And after the label, we're of course gonna say four, not aria flow to. Whoa there, I thought I would catch the word four. And I just usually copy and paste the ID just so I don't make a mistake in how I spell it. After this, we're gonna say phone. We should have now as the name, the email and the phone all working successfully. The power of Bootstrap is it automatically moves the word phone up as I click into the form field. Pretty cool. Now the comment section is a little bit different than an input. So what I wanna do is move my code up a little bit. And for a comment, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna say div class, this part won't change. So I'm gonna say form floating and MB3. And then what I will add is a text area. So not any more of an input type. So the text area is then gonna include a class form control, so similar to what we had before, the placeholder we're gonna include is going to be leave a comment here, and then we're gonna add the ID. I could have added the ID first, but I had my notes as placeholder first, so well, there you go. <laughs> the ID is going to be, in this case, floating text area right here. And I do wanna add a bit of a style just to give it some height for some extra area. So in this case, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna say style. I rarely write inline styles, but in this case, I am gonna put one in. So I'm gonna say height colon 100 pixels. So this is a place to write the information in. Now also be aware, do not put any space between the text area opening and the text area closing. That'll create a manual space inside the text area and it would drive me nuts if I just had to get rid of that extra space at all times. So do be aware to not open and close it with a space in between. After the text area, we do have to add a label. So we'll say label four, and again, we're gonna grab the ID, so I'll say floating text area, and dropping it in here, I'm gonna say comments. Now what I get is I get a space of 100 pixels tall to write my comments inside this area, which equates to about three lines of text. Normally wouldn't be this long, but again, I'm just using the container for display purposes only. So awesome, I have the form built, but now I have to go in and put all the icons inside of this form. For all the icons, we're gonna use Font Awesome. We can find Font Awesome at fontawesome.com. Now I do recommend signing up for a free account because that makes it really easy to set up a kit by just copying and pasting one line of code. I've already got an account. So what I can do is by default, it's free for up to 10,000 page views per month. If you've got a lot more than you will have to pay. But what you wanna do is come over to the kit section in Font Awesome. Over here, I'm gonna say manage kits. And I've already got a kit, but if I wanna create a new kit, let's say I have a new website, I can say create the kit, and oh, I'm only allowed one kit. So you know what? We're gonna use the same kit. So in this kit right here, I'm gonna copy the kit code. Just FYI, I will delete this after the video, so while you're welcome to look at my kit code, I am gonna delete this one, so you will not be able to use this one, but you have to use your own. All you have to do is basically copy this kit code, and in your site, in this case, my bootstrap page, I'm gonna drop it right below, or in this case, above the head section. And basically, I'm all set to go with the Font Awesome icons. That's pretty darn rad. Thank you, Font Awesome, for being, sorry for the pun, awesome. So now that I have the kit set up to go, what I have to do is I have to go and find the icons that I wanna use, and then we'll write some CSS to move it around a little bit to fit inside of the form. So to find icons, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to this little magnifying glass and up here I can search. Now I've already found a person I wanna use for the name. So I'm gonna say user and also the guy with a tie on. I kinda like this little like neutral character. And if you do wanna go for the female side versus the male side, that is totally fine. I just thought he was a little more generic in terms of an icon. So what I can do is when I click on this icon, all I have to do is I can copy this code snippet just like this, 
And what I can do is I can simply come down here. I'm going to put this icon at the top just so we can see it drop in. And like magic, I have my icon right inside my page with just copying and pasting two lines of code. Now at this point in time, I do have to write some CSS. So I will create a new CSS file. I'm going to say custom.css. And in my index file, what I will do is I will add a link, an href, and I will say period slash custom CSS, and the rel will be style sheet. And just like that, I've added my style sheet to my project. Just to test it out, I was to add just a body background color. So I'm gonna say body, and let's give like a purple background color. The reason why I do this is I just wanna make sure that my CSS files link correctly. And so I always like to ensure by adding some obnoxious color and magic. We have a purple background, which means the CSS file is working just fine. Nope, I'm not gonna keep the purple. I know you might love it, but it's gonna go out the window. So perfect. My custom CSS file is working properly. So for this first icon, what I wanna do is I wanna cut this I class FA solid user tie. And what I wanna do is I wanna put it inside of the form floating MB3. Now I am gonna add a couple extra classes. I'm gonna say icon for a class name, and I'm also give it a larger size. So I'm gonna say FA for font awesome dash LG. That's gonna make the font just be a little bit bigger than the default sizing. So as we can see right here, it's sitting kind of on top of it and it did adjust the name a little bit. So we're gonna fix that in our CSS because, well, it doesn't look perfect as we are right here. So if we go into our CSS file, which we do with custom CSS, I'm gonna type form, man, form floating, <laughs> Form floating, both saying and typing, is gonna be my, my downfall right here in this project. Form floating, there we go. I'm gonna say position is going to be relative. And that won't really do anything as of right now. But what I wanna do is, I wanna then say after this, icon, and in here with position, if you watched any of my videos before, you're almost always gonna see me write position relative, and then position absolute. And now we're looking a little bit better. Notice how the name just went right back to the almost right position. And now we can control the placement of this icon. For the top position, what I'm gonna do is to really make it easy since these all this text is almost in the middle or in the exact middle, I can use a calc at 50%. So I'm gonna say calc 50%. What's gonna do is it's gonna drop the picture basically right in the middle of the form field, which is great, but one, it crashes into the word name. We're gonna fix that in one second. And the icon kinda of has to be shifted over from the left. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say left. And for this design, I found that 1.25 rem satisfied the space off the edge of the form. Yes, as you can see, the word name is crashing into the icon which we have to fix right now. We have to write a double class. So I'm gonna say form floating and then label comma for, oops, let's not forget the period. Again, form floating. I'm gonna make that mistake almost every time I feel like. Form floating and then form control. That's the two classes or that's the class and the tag that we had before. So the form control, we're gonna say left 0.5 rem. Then we're gonna say padding left 3.5 rem is what I found to be acceptable. And if I save it, now what I get, oh, look at this. Now we have our name way off of the icon so it won't crash into it. Again, if you wanna make it a little bit tighter, and you can shift your numbers a little bit closer together. I just wanted some extra space all around everything. And now the word name, if I type the word John Smith, it doesn't feel like it's too close together and crammed in. Looking pretty good. So we have this one. The one that we have to watch for at the very bottom, we're gonna fix at the end, 
is the text area as it's not going to be the input tag as we had before. But before that, we have to tackle the email and the phone. So for these two, we have to go back to font awesome. And I have it sitting right here on the screen somewhere. So we've got this little guy sitting right here. So what I wanna do is I wanna find an envelope that signifies an email. So if I type envelope, what I should get right at the top is an envelope. Now if I click that, I get my code. And all I have to do now is I have to basically paste it into the form floating down below. I just have to add the word icon and the FA large to make the icon a little bit bigger. So if I say icon, and then I'm gonna type the word F-A-L-G, it drops it right in, Look, it looks great. The power of CSS, you write it once and it just repeats over and over again. We're doing the phone next. So what I wanna do is I wanna search for a phone. So if I come over here and I say phone, and just like that, I'm gonna copy the phone, and here we go. Drop it in, I'm gonna say icon, and F-A-L-G, just like magic, it adds it, it just looks great. I always like it when it just drops in and it works because half the time, that's not always the case. So the last one we're gonna work on is that I found an icon for a message. So what I did before is I typed the word message into this little area and I got this little message icon. You can use any one you want, but I just found this one is like, well, a message icon. So I'm gonna copy this one. This requires a little extra work, not too much more, but a little extra work. As I say a little bit, because we have to adjust it just a touch. Since this one's a little bit different, I'm gonna write the word icon text area, as it's not the same as it was before because the calc 50% doesn't apply since we applied the height at 100% to this design. I am gonna keep it the FA large though, so I'll say F-A-L-G. Now this one, of course, will not look the right way because we haven't fixed this one quite yet in our CSS, but we can do that right now. Inside our CSS, take out that extra space. I'm gonna say icon text area. And in here, I'm gonna repeat the same, position absolute. And based upon your font size, this was where you have to kind of guess because in the past, I could say calc 50 and it's gonna nail them all at 50%. But with this one, I had to manually move it down a little bit until I found the right space. So if I save this, the comments went back in the right position, but now this one I found was top at 1.8 rem for my design. 1.8 rem, and then I have to move it left again so I can say left at 1.25 rem, keeping them all the same going to the left. And that's how the comments one had to work. It was a little different, or I had to change the word calc down below. And of course, with any actual form, we have to add some sort of button down below. So to finish this off, let's add a little button down here to make it look like an official looking form. So if you go below the form floating, I'm gonna say that one hopefully correct one more time, I'm gonna add a button. And this button, I'm gonna say the type is a button just to make sure it's clarified officially. And then I'm gonna say class, I'm gonna say BTN, BT, whoopin, BTN outline dark, just to give it a bit of a kick for a cooler design. And we'll say submit. And now what I get, hopefully, is the word submit. Just for display purposes, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a kick at the bottom. So I'll say margin bottom five, just so I can scroll on my page. There we go. Now what I have is a contact form I can fill out with icons.